Let's talk about a villain that has been suggested to me for quite some time, the Ultra Humanite. He might look like your typical, average albino gorilla in fancy red suspenders, but he's one of the greatest minds in the DC Universe, and one of the most influential and imposing Superman villains of all time. The Ultra Humanite debuted in Action Comics number 13 from June of 1939. Forgive me for the picture quality of the following images, but these scans are from a very old comic book. Cut me some slack. Though his real name has never been revealed, the Ultra Humanite was originally a crippled scientist who possessed the most advanced human brain on Earth through various unknown experiments he performed on himself. His initial motivation was always the domination of planet Earth, what else, and he would use his superior intellect to run various crime rings and sinister enterprises for racketeering, extortion, you name it. He would make his final appearance in Action Comics number 21, where he would meet his apparent demise in a volcanic eruption. Afterwards, he would be replaced with Lex Luthor, who would grow to become Superman's greatest archenemy in the decades to come. Ultra Humanite wouldn't appear again until the Silver Age, most notably issue 195 of the Justice Society of America, when he first acquired the aforementioned gorilla body. It's revealed that using his gifted intelligence, he transferred his brain into the body of an immensely strong animal, being disgusted by his physically weaker human form. He recreates the secret society of villains, so they can defeat the Justice League of Earth-1 and the Justice Society of Earth-2, their combined enemies. Ultra Humanite explains that there is a perfect cosmic balance in the universe, and that by removing these ten heroes from the multiverse, much like a proton or electron being removed from an atom, the collective energy of the cosmos will be forced to correct the imbalance, and remove all superheroes from either Earth-1 or Earth-2. The logic in that might sound a bit far-fetched, but hey, it's comic books, and all of this is coming from an evil white gorilla. In all seriousness though, he had been tricking his allies, in a sense. Ultra Humanite made them believe that the cosmic imbalance would decide the fate of either world, that the secret society had a chance to wipe out their respective heroes, but Ultra Humanite has known all along it will be his own. He will be able to defeat Superman. He eventually confronts the Man of Steel, sending an army of gorillas at him. Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Superman? The villains manage to succeed, and Earth-2's heroes are wiped out, despite Ultra-Humanite's allies claiming him to be a liar. But they won't be an annoyance any longer, as he has them beamed back down to their Earth, Earth-1. Ultra-Humanite goes to the General Assembly on his home of Earth-2, and declares to the world that he is now their lord and master. However, he had a miscalculation of sorts, and the combined heroes managed to return and defeat the secret society, and of course, the Ultra-Humanite. Humanite's backstory would remain relatively the same throughout the next several years, but another appearance of his that is noteworthy would be in the 2002 storyline Stealing Thunder, where Humanite returns, having taken over the body of an elderly Johnny Thunder, and tricks Jakeem Williams into giving him his magical pen, housing the immensely powerful genie Thunderbolt. With its power, Ultra Humanite would restore his youth, an attempt to take over the world. 2011's New 52, which rebooted the entire DC Universe continuity at that time, depicted Ultra Humanite as this tentacled alien who was trapped in the Phantom Zone and had escaped. It had the power to induce fear in its victims, and fed off of fear as well. It was a very bizarre design and was an amalgamation of several different animals and creatures, by far the most unique version of Ultra Humanite to date, that's for sure.
Ultra Humanite is notable for being one of the very first supervillains in the comic book medium, as well as one of the first recurring antagonists in superhero stories. He predated Lex Luthor by nearly a year. Like I had previously mentioned, Ultra Humanite has one of the most gifted minds in the DC Universe. His intricate and well-planned schemes are evidence of that, able to puzzle both hero and villain alike. He usually has an escape plan figured out too in case something goes wrong, and he is a master at exploitation and manipulation. He knows every move you are about to make before you even make it, and is able to target any weakness you have. Well, I think that's all I really have to say about Ultra Humanite. I think he's one of the most iconic and influential villains DC has, but tends to get thrown on the back burner sometimes when it comes to other, more notable mainstream villains. What do you guys think of Ultra Humanite? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and share it to help me out. I will see you in the next one. Take care.